in recent time, Peter, Dr. Peter Atia has gained a, a lot of attention by noting this correlation between VO2 max and longevity. And he says something like, the people with the longest lifetimes are like in the top 2% of the VO2 max. Well, if you consider three basic facts, this, this is actually brain dead obvious. Fact number one is that when your VO2 max declines to zero, you're dead. Fact number two is that VO2 max declines with age. And fact number three is that VO2 max also declines with gaining weight. So I don't think anyone would disagree with uh, any of these three facts. And, and so anyway, here, here's a simple way to look at this. Um, here, here's, here's a simple chart. You know, we got lifespan on the bottom, which is years, VO2 max on the y-axis, you know, generally ranging from uh, values of 30 for rich, pretty poor to 80, which is like world-class distance runner. And of course, if you are high on, on, you have a high baseline ability, you've got a long runway before you're gonna decline to zero due to the factors of aging and gaining weight. So the, the real question is how trainable is this? You know, this is the thing we, that's important as it would relate to people in, people in general. So the answer is this, or at least a uh, consideration. Uh, in distance running, VO2 max is pretty much a real critical predictor of performance. And in those circles, it seems to be generally accepted that VO2 max is a genetically gifted physical characteristic like, like height is for like basketball and or the color of your eyes and stuff like that. And I can certainly attest to this too. I um, was a distance runner in school and I trained pretty hard and yeah, I was a pretty mediocre runner. I mean, there were lots of people better than me and didn't have to train nearly as hard to do so. So as far as your baseline VO2 max is concerned, I, I, I would say it, it's really not going to be all that trainable. You're just born with something. So now the second consideration is, can you de um, lessen the, the slope of decline? And one way which is uh, most definitely will work is, is not to gain too much weight because weight gain does increase VO2 max. The other one, it relates to whether endurance or cardio type training will, will lessen the slope. This one I don't know the answer to. It'd be interesting if there were studies on this that I am not aware of. I am of the belief of the use it or lose it school, if you know, especially as you get older. So I could certainly believe that if you maintain cardio endurance type activities as you get older, your decline of VO2 max will probably be less than what it would be um, if you didn't do these things, you know, and I would even normalize that against weight. So in other words, even if you gain some weight, I, you probably could offset some of that with, with the training, but um, I really don't know. So I think these, these, are the, these are the questions that you really need, need, to, need to really sort out here. But here's one thing that kind of gets missed in these discussions. You know, while the oldest people have had the highest VO2 max in because you've got the longer runway of, of decline that you could endure before it gets critical, you know, the reverse is not true that if you're born with a high VO2 max that you're just going to live a long time. And, and, you know, and the obvious reason for this is, is like as I show here, you know, obviously up here these people have world-class VO2 max, but you can get cancer. And, and die. You know, this guy could get heart disease and he could die. Another guy gets dementia, another guy gets diabetes or metabolic disorder. You, you mean, so, yeah, you certainly, you, you can get many of these uh, deadly diseases and, and have, in essence, have your life cut short long before you've um, experienced the full run out of your of your um, VO2 max. So, and of course, none of that gets discussed either. So I think these are considerations. You know, the, the only re the reason why I bring this up is, is because 
this suggestion that, oh yeah, we should all just jump into endurance and zone two training and all that, and it's gonna make you live longer. I don't think it's as simple as that. And I, I actually look at my situation, maybe I'm a bit unique. I've uh, kind of switched away from running to calisthenics and I've gained 20 pounds doing this. This move has actually lowered my, you know, just due to the weight gain, lowered my VO2, VO2 max by about 12, 13%, which on surface of things would say, yeah, it's gonna make me live uh, shorter. However, the other problem I had when I was very light and skinny and weak was that I, I had a lot of insulin resistance. So I was, of course, susceptible to, to uh, metabolic disorders like diabetes. In fact, when I was 18 years old, I failed a blood sugar test at my cross-country physical in college and I had to come back fast and I guess I was okay when, when that was done. But that's a sign of, of pre-diabetes and insulin resistance. I did some tests on myself uh, after eating a meal and, and after fasting. And right now it seems like I don't have that um, insulin resistance. I was like a uh, hundred, whatever units these, these tests are in, right, you know, pretty much an hour after a meal. And then after complete fasting for over 24 hours, it had dropped to 95. So, um, and, if, and I guess, Anything under 100 fasted is considered good. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, you know, I think there may be more to this. Now, I, I may be kind of a unique case in terms, I don't think the majority of people are as skinny and, and, and um, susceptible to insulin resistance as I am, but I think that this is a more nuanced kind, kind of discussion than some of this popular quick, uh, you know, this kind of quick do this, you're gonna live longer type attitude that I hear out there. I'd be interested in what you think about this. And uh, thank you for listening.